What's going on, people? It's Mr. Dole back again with Dole Meets, and I've got a special guest, player that made 526 games, only scored a few goals in 11, and a player that I looked up, looked up to, um, one of the best defenders I've seen in the Forest shirt, and I've got to put respect in his name. I've got Steve Chittle. How are you doing? I'm very well, Ben. Thanks for having me on the, on the channel. Thanks very much. No, it's a pleasure. Like I said, it's a pleasure. One of the best players I've seen in a red shirt, but, um, and I've had so many people that's asking for you, but and like I said, it's a pleasure to come on the channel. Um, but let's start, Steve. Um, 526 games, and I want to start from the beginning. Um, when did you, what age did you start with Nottingham Forest? Uh, well, I was at Notts County, funnily enough, when I was 12. Uh, and Alan Hill, who was the head of recruitment to Notts County, went across the forest. Uh, and I followed Alan when I was 14. And I went across and signed what was classed as associate schoolboy forms then. Uh, so pre uh, any kind of scholarship or YTS that there was. And ended up playing for the junior teams there. Uh, ended up training with the first team in Casey when I was in the school holidays at 14 and 15, which was really, really bizarre. Training with these people that I'd watched on the TV and win European Cup. So... It was, yeah, I support Forest as a kid. Went to my first game when they were in the second division in 76, I think, with my dad. Uh, and obviously to go and sign at Forest was, it's a dream. You know, it's that proverbial dream that every kid dreams of. Uh, and you know, listen, I enjoyed every minute of it. Mm. So, as you know, um, Brian Clough was there. Um, your first day you met Brian Clough, what, what was the first thing you did? <sighs> Well, we had a meeting, myself, I think in the meeting, myself, was myself, myself, parents, Phil Starbuck, uh, we'd all signed at the same time uh, and we'd met, obviously, Brian for the first time in the, in the trophy room. Uh, it was a bit of a, a bit of a shock to assist, to be fair, because you obviously heard of this man, you'd seen this man, but you'd never met this man in person. And even through my whole time, for us, he was one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Uh, it was nice with your parents, it was nice with yourself. Uh, and it was just it was just a great experience and obviously something that I'll treasure for the rest of my life is working with and, and knowing Brian Clough himself. Do you get do you ever, ever get um, a turn off from him? Yeah, loads. Uh, we had plenty to be fair. Uh, whenever you thought you'd made it, uh, Brian had knocked you down a peg or two and make you very, very humble. Uh, he's some, some really good respectful uh, traits in life as well. We had to go and do his garden, for Christ's sake, and walk his dog, his <laughs> apprentices as well. So, you know, we, we did uh, we did our bit to help him, uh, but obviously he helped us massively in our careers. Yeah. So your first training session, like I said, you mentioned like the players, like you played with Stuart Pearce and, and etc. Uh, what was your first training session like? Was you starstruck? I honestly can't remember, but it was a long, long time ago, but... <laughs> Uh, obviously you, the dressing room itself I'd signed in 85 Stuart signed at the same time with Ian Butterworth and yep. Brian Rice Neil Webb people like that yep. uh, and to go into even into the first team squad when you were a kid at 16 and 17 was a little bit daunting uh, obviously you'd seen these people play Gary Burtles was still around at the time yep. I was his boot boy for a couple of years was your? Uh, still still keeping contact with Gary yeah I did his boots for a couple of years he was a very very good tipper at Christmas I uh, also cleaned Johnny Metgod's boots, Gary Mills. So, you know, we did have full apprenticeship, uh, but to go and join him with the first team was, was a big step from where we were with the apprenticeships and training with the youth team. Uh, but it makes you grow up really, really fast. So, like, um, let's fast forward it. Like I said, I know you, you, you made your, you can remember your debut for Forest. Yeah, I made my debut, full enough, away at Chelsea. Chelsea. Came on yeah. a sub. Uh, yeah, I think I was uh, 17 or 18 and played right wing. I uh, got right told wing. to go play right. Yeah, I, I was sub, and I think Lee Glover came off. I went on to play right wing. I uh, got told to go and play right wing like a centre back. That was my uh, <laughs> basic instruction. Yeah. Oh, that's unbelievable! Right wing. Oh, that's that's mad. Um, then, as you know, um, centre back. Um, you spent most of the time in your career. Um, and fast forward to the ninety-one um, final. Um, I know you played alongside players like. Colin Cooper, Des Walker, Stuart Pearce, Ian Wone, um, in a, against Tottenham Hotspur. What, what was that like? Uh, I don't remember. I've seen the game back occasionally. I don't remember too much of the occasion itself. It's one of those things where you get really uh, embroiled in it all. I remember the semi-final well against West Ham. I had a great day and obviously get to the cup final is a huge achievement. And everybody was saying that maybe the, the manager's name's on the trophy because he'd never won the trophy himself. Uh, it was a chance for us to go and win the FA Cup for the first time since 59 with Forrest. Uh, it started off obviously extremely well uh, with Stuart scoring after 
Gazzanella decapitated Chelsea and Parks yeah. in the first 10 minutes of the game. But I've said this before that, you know, if Gazza stays on the pitch, I think we win the game because, you know, he was a, an excited individual. It's probably the best way to put it. Uh, and they were down to near enough 10 men while he was just running around doing what he wanted to do. Mm. Uh, but they obviously changed the team. Naeem came on. Uh, Norm saved the penalty, which again, you think, right, our name's on the cup. Yeah. Uh, but now we had to go to extra time after Porsche equalised and obviously their scores are unfortunate, own goals, so we lose the game 2-1. But, you know, it's one of those experiences that you'll always remember. Uh, you can say you've taken part in an FA Cup final and there aren't too many people that can say that. So I'm really, really pleased. Mm. So, um, as you know, Brian Clough's uh, era um, finishes, but what was the best time you had with Brian Clough? Uh, just the whole experience really Ben it was one of those things like I say you learn a lot in life to be respectful to people and how to speak to people properly he made you feel great when you uh, when you had a bit of a tough time and he, he brought you down to down to earth when you thought you'd made it so it was very humbling it was very levelling uh, probably the best experience like I say making my debut uh, away at Norwich the day before my 19th birthday my first start uh, and winning the League Cup in 1990 yeah, uh, as well as being on the bench for the year before the '89. So we had we had some really good years. You know, we went to the ZDS Trophy final. The ZDS Trophy, final. I remember that. <laughs> all, the, all these huge cup finals, uh, the Simod Cup. So you know, listen, the trips to Wembley were maybe twice a year, and they were great times for obviously players and fans alike. Yeah. So um, as you know, Frank Clark took over, um, and he brought in players like Stan Collymore, Dave Phillips, Colin Cooper, as you know. Um, what a team that was. Um, I spoke to David Phillips not recently and he said um, he praised you about yourself, uh, one of the best defenders that you played with. Um, what, was your, what, what was your time with that team, with under Frank Clark? Well, the team was really exciting. We had to start all over because obviously yeah. Frank's come in and he's got to take over the reputation of Brian Clough and Nottingham Forest but he's probably the best man for the job and I've said it before. I uh, knew the history of the club, knew how the club worked, knew where we wanted to be. I knew what the club could be again. And we did have to start from scratch. Uh, we had our first pre-season when Frank came in, brought in a fitness coach called Pete Edwards. And Pete was astounded how unfit we were. Uh, mm. So we had to tail, tail back our pre-season. Uh, obviously brought in Des Little as well. At that Des Little time. as well. Des was, yeah, Des Little. Des was a great player in that back four. Yeah. Uh, as well as, like say, Philo and Coops. Uh, and like I say, Stan, probably the best player I've played with at Forest. Uh, unbelievable player. And they were really, really exciting times. To go straight back up after going down for the first time uh, was a massive achievement. Uh, and obviously, the couple of years after that were brilliant as well for us. Mm. Quick question, Steve, about that, that team. Like I mentioned like Dave Phillips, and like I say yourself, Colin Cooper, um, Stan Collimore. And I mentioned about David Phillips. Like he, he got player of the season that year. And do you think he has not got the, 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 all the wars that he's got? Like... People don't talk about him as much. Like, do you think it's unfair about that? Well, Dave was an international footballer. Uh, you know, obviously a Welsh international. And he, he went about his business very, very quietly. He was quite off the pitch. He was he quite did. on the pitch. But he got his job done. Uh, like you say, and those players are invaluable to a team. You can go around and get the work done. You'll always have your superstars. Normally the boys who play at the top of the pitch are the superstars who, who gain all the accolades and score the goals and make the team look fantastic. But you need some... Um, workman-like characters in there, shall we say. Yeah. Know, there's a lot of people who class themselves as piano pushers like myself, but somebody <laughs> has to push the piano for the piano players yeah. to play. Uh, so so that's what, you know, maybe the people who go under the radar a little bit, they still deserve a little bit of credit, but it's not as obviously as big as the superstars. Yeah, that's true. Um, so let's fast forward. Like I say, um, Frank Clark, you got promoted. Um, and then you did well in the Premier League. But Steve, I'm going to mention it, uh, the, the away from cup run. Um, I know you. everyone talks about it over and over again to your... The Bayern Munich goal, um, I, I couldn't believe it. Like, I went mad. Uh, I think I was um, I was 15, I think I was. Um, that feeling. Talk, talk about the feeling. What's going against Bayern Munich? We well, can probably see the feeling. It was more shock than anything else. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I see I, it. I see it. We, you kept saying, my goal, my goal. What was that all about? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't one that's supposed to score. We'd, we'd set the set play up in the morning. So, Philo takes a set play. I spin around the back and head the ball across the goal for somebody else to have a tap in. But the trajectory of the ball and the angle of my approach or whatever, it's hit me on the side of the head and, and yeah. spun in past Oliver Kahn. And like I say, I, I'm cl obviously claiming the goal because nobody thinks it's supposed to be me who's going to score. Uh, but it, like I say, the same end as Trevor Francis, uh, Olympic Stadium in Munich. 
given herself a chance in the uh, in the reverse leg at home. So we thought. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a it's a great uh, it's a great occasion for me. And like I said, I've seen it now a few times after, and, and the surprise is still there every time I score. I just thought, I just thought to myself, oh, I bet Steve's had, he's had this question so over and over again. But I had to because everyone's asked about it, so I thought I'd ask it. Um, but like I said that, like I said that, that World Cup run, like court finals, like what was it like um, being in the court finals and just that run you had under Frank Clark? Yeah, it was really good. Like I say, we got the promotion. Uh, we finished third in the Premier League, uh, which nowadays would have been Champions League. Never mind yeah. playing in the UEFA League, which is now the Europa. Yeah. Uh, it would have been Champions League, which would have been ridiculous, really, for a team again like Little Nottingham Forest, this provincial little city club that uh, always punches above its weight. Uh, so they were fantastic. Like the cup final run from 87 uh, to 92, even when they lost in the League Cup against Manchester United. Mm. You know, they were great occasions. We got some nice suits out of it, some awful <laughs> ties. Uh, won some, what time was that? What, what, what suit huh? was there? What, what suit was oh, that? We used to get some suits from Paul Smith. Obviously, Paul Smith. <laughs> oh, he can't complain. He can't complain. Yeah, so we, we, were, we were kind of smart. We went out there kind of smart, but it was, like I say, the late 80s, early 90s, and some of the gear was a bit gearish. <laughs> Did you not keep him? Uh, no. Oh, um, that's I, evil. You I've not kept them. No. no, I, don't, no they were, I think I don't know whether somebody's walking around Nottingham in a in a two piece Paul Smith suit with our names embroidered. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh my days. Um, so yeah, um, that US Cup run and um, that season, uh, Frank Clark, um, who didn't do well, uh, he got sacked. Uh, so, what was your opinion when he left? Uh it was unfortunate, really. Obviously, again, if people do really well, you become a victim of your own success. Uh, people expect you to be like that every year, and it, it didn't happen. Obviously, Stan left. Uh, Stan left. We had to replace Stan. Uh, we brought in other good players again, like uh, Kevin Prime Campbell Roy. came in, and then we ended up Frank getting the sack, and then it became a little bit messy again until Dave Bassett came in, which mm. again we had another period of another couple of years where we had success. Failure followed by success, shall we say? Mm. Um, had another couple of good years when obviously we've signed new players. Uh, we've got Pierre Van Hooydonk involved. Yeah, let, 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 let me see about the, that. Was I, 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 great I, yeah, I, I was about to say about the uh, that the, 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 the day Bassett season. Um, let me let me put it through here. That like that team was actually amazing. And with your with like I said, you have players like Colin Cooper, uh, Alan Rogers come in, does little. Scott Gemmell, Ian Warren, you had two fantastic players. In your head, like, you was like, you played for, like, England 21s. Didn't you think, like, oh, I need to stay in the Premiership to, like, I don't know, play and get an England call-up? No, not really. I, I, I didn't ever see myself as that kind of uh, category of being a, a full England international. You know, I yeah. had torn the 21s caps. Yeah. But I've said before that they were, they were better defenders than myself, Ben. I'm very... Uh, understanding of what my strengths are and they were yeah. better players than me. so it, it was really straightforward that you know I was in a good team obviously and really enjoyed playing alongside Colin uh, Colin got himself England caps which is fantastic because he you know he was a great player great he player was. and a great friend and still is uh, but like again I saw you speak to Bart last week Bart was another great addition to the squad uh, great footballer Bart great guy and him and Kev loved the goal celebration and they were good time. <laughs> did you not join in why didn't you join in Listen, I'm not as cool as those guys. I'm just, I'm just a kid <laughs> in the back. <laughs> oh, but no, but I, said, I spoke to Bart Willis about that. So I thought, I, like, I spoke to him privately. I said to him, but I forgot to tell him about how come no one else joined in? Why was just you two? You could have just done a one-two step or something like that. Yeah, they're the best answer. We'll leave them to it. You know, the, <laughs> the boys, even on Christmas dudes and things, they were the coolest kids in the block as well. <laughs> oh, my God. So um, that season, the Dave Bassett season, like I said, you're, what a player and what a team. Um, the season, uh, afterward, then it went downhill yet again. Then, you, as you know, your your centre back partner Colin Cooper he left, um, and then Kevin Campbell left as well. Um, and then, as you everyone knows, Pierre Van Hooydonk left. Um, what what was your opinion on all that, Steve? Uh, well, I didn't know what went off behind the scenes regarding Pierre's conversation with the with the owners of so what he was saying. Uh, Colin left for. Personal reason the only could go back to would have been Middlesbrough. He went back home with his family and everything else, which is understandable. Mm. Kevin left and Kevin went out to Turkey. Uh, yeah. And then Pierre said his part and Pierre 
made his statements of going on strike. Listen, I still don't agree with it to the day, but you know. Okay, don't, don't you agree? With it? I about to say, what? Well, don't you? No, agree I don't. I don't think you. I don't think you should be going on strike personally. But like I say, he, he made his stance. Uh, he made his point very, very strongly. Uh, you're getting paid by and employed by a football club to participate in whatever you need to do. And if you have something that you need to sort out, sort it out. But listen, like I've said before, he, he's made his stance, and he was very passionate about the way he made his stance. Uh, mm-hmm. But it, I think. I think it's more of a continental way of making a stance as regards to this English stiff upper lip and get on and do what yeah. you're supposed to be doing. Uh, but he came back. He was a bit frosty when he came back. Uh, did, you, did you talk to him? Did, did you talk to him? I spoke to him before he came back. Uh, the manager spoke to me, said, listen, Pierre wants to come back. And I spoke to Pierre, said, well, you need to come back and explain your reasons. Uh, so he stood in the front of the dressing room very eloquently and explained his reasons. He was... Yeah. Promised this and promised that, and the promise has never arrived. So, and that's why he made his stance. And a couple of the lads said their bit, and then we have to move on. Like I say, when he scored his goal against Derby, you know, and in the end, he ended up celebrating by himself, which is, you know, which is a bit harsh on him. But you know, people have their own views on things. Ben, hundred uh, percent. I'm sure he'll stick by stick by his reasons, and the lads will stick by their reasons as well. So that's one of those situations. Bit weird, but uh, we moved on from it. Mm. Um, I forgot to mention, like um, I spoke to like I spoke to um, like Kevin, Alan Rogers, Chris Bob Williams about the the last game of the season against um, Reading, and they said to me, "Because I know you played only forty five minutes, didn't you, for like in that game?" Yeah, I came off again. I've still what got happened? it now. I've still got my, I've still got my bad back now. <laughs> <laughs> like they said, they said to me, right? I don't know. Like I said, if you watch your opinion, they said that was the most frustrated game to play because they was already relegated and. What, what, was your, what was your opinion on, on that game? Well, I came off, like I say, I came off injured uh, and I was listening to most of it because I was in the treatment room and in the dressing room. Uh, and all, all I heard is obviously when Bart scored, uh, that we'd done it. Uh, but from what from I understand, we had loads and loads of possession, loads of opportunity. We just couldn't score. Uh, and it was like I say, but we got over the line in the end, yeah. which, was the, which was the end goal. Uh, and like I say, Bart scores a great goal with his left foot uh, in front of the uh, Bridgeford end. Yeah. Uh, so job done in the end. Yeah. Um, so you're back in the Premier League um, and you played a few games. But uh, I know I was looking at the archive and you're a goal, Steve, and I didn't know you was a person that could take penalties. Well, the only reason I took penalties, Ben, because everybody else had left. The ones who all normally took penalties were obviously Stuart was there before, yeah. Pierre was there before, took penalties, and they'd gone by this stage. Yeah. Uh, so being the captain and being 50 to 1 to score each week, you know, I'd stick myself on penalties. <laughs> 50 to 1 each week. So my uncle used to have a pound every week on myself to score. Uh, I think I scored two penalties that season, so he made himself a couple of quid at least. Oh, my day. Um You mentioned like being captain for Nottingham Forest. Um, what, what was it like just honouring to be the captain of Forest? Like I said, you players like Stuart Pearce, Colin Cooper, um, captain of Forest. So what, what was it like, you captain Forest? Yeah, it's a massive honour. Uh, and it was in the Premier League as well. I know the pre- that season didn't go well. Yeah. Uh, but it's one of those where you can look back on reflection of what you've done, like now when you become a, a grey and middle-aged man and think, well, I've captained my football club in the Premier League. And, yeah. you know, you're a very, uh, there's a very small number of people who can say that. And I'm very proud to be able to say that myself. Mm. Um, so that season ends um, and then... Bassett, no, not Bassett, Ron Action leaves, gets sacked, and then Platt comes in. Um, and then he told you to go on loan. What was, what was your opinion on all that? Well, it, it wasn't a matter of being told to go out on loan. At the start of the season, uh, obviously, David Platt comes in and brings his own players in. Uh, and we were of an era, maybe, that uh, we were getting to the end of our twilight years, shall we say. I was 31 at, or 30 at the time. Uh, and at times I wasn't that, making that, the first your team. Prime. That's a prime years of being a best defender, isn't it? Being first well, I'm not so sure about prime. I think prime 26, 27, Ben. But when somebody else comes in and they, they're younger players out there, potentially that he wants to sign. Mm. Uh, he's inherited a group, myself, Norm and Woney, that left very quickly uh, within the space of, I think, six months. Uh, but I wasn't making 20-man squads. I was training with the youth team at the time. Uh, so... It was a bit frustrating. I'd played some games, uh, didn't make squads with the games, played in other games. Was that, was that under Platt? Were injured. Under Platt? With Platt, yeah, at the start of that season. And at, and at one point, I uh, didn't make a squad. It was a home game. I can't remember the game. It was on a Tuesday night. 
And he just called me after the game and said, listen, I don't see where the future here anymore. If you can find yourself somewhere to go, by all means, go find yourself a club. What was your so reply? I, uh, what was your reply when you said that? Fair enough. That's his opinion. You know, he's the manager. You know, yeah. I could stand there until I'm blue in the face and argue a point why I should be staying and everything else. But the person in charge is the manager, Ben, and the manager will say whether he wants people to stay or go. So you can either sulk about it or move on and do something about it. So I got straight on the phone to Harry. Obviously, I had a couple of really good years under Harry. Yeah. Uh, and said, Harry, listen, I'm surplus to requirements at Forest. Would you be interested in taking me for a month? So I went for a month in Barnsley. Yeah. Uh, in November 99 and after a month I'd signed there for two and a half years and again uh, we got to a playoff final that year to try and get in the Premier League and unfortunately we lost to Ipswich uh, in 2000 so I enjoyed it listen it was a it was a good break for me Ben you know you know, I'd been there a long time uh, needed a new challenge that was a new challenge and I enjoyed it I really enjoyed it uh, but I'm obviously look back on the way it finished it wasn't my choice to leave uh, but that's one of those things mm. So, like I said, you made 523 games, um, the most, the third most experienced uh, player to play for Forest. Um, of all in games, is, is the one game that comes out like that was the best game I've ever played for Forest? The best team or the best game? Best game, best game. The best game. Uh, probably the FA Cup semi final against West Ham uh, when everything came together on the day. Mm. Uh, we'd been so close on so many occasions, obviously two games against Liverpool in the FA Cup semi-finals where we didn't get over the line. And this was a massive release of pressure to get to the FA Cup final itself. So probably the biggest game was in the FA Cup final, but I also love the Peterborough away game when we got promotion. Yeah. Uh, when, we, when we're behind twice and Stan scores his, his, uh, his normal worldy goal. And those those scenes were crazy. Those scenes were crazy. I've seen pictures now with fans I, of the I floodlights. still see it. I still see it. Oh, it's I still see it. <laughs> Great, great occasion and another one, another one of those that you, you'll always remember. Yeah. Um, so questions time, Steve. I, I, like I said, when I put it out on social media, um, people ask so much questions, Steve. Uh, but this is my one um, and I will ask every Forest player this. Um, in the, I think it was 98, season, uh, you was around Alan Rogers and uh, Andy Johnson and um, you know there was, there was nutcases. Did they ever get you back or did yourself uh, play planks or any other five player? No, I didn't get involved with those two lunatics. <laughs> they were, they were absolutely barking mad. They were, uh, Tank obviously came from Tranmere as this young, excitable kid and fantastic player, full of energy and great, and great ability. Uh, and Jono came in from Norwich and those two together, they were just trouble bent. <laughs> And wherever they wherever they went, they were room. They used to do each other's rooms. They did everybody else's rooms when they got the. Did chance. they not get your room? Did they get your room? They do my room. No, I, I don't know whether I was classed as this uh, boring old fart or somebody that they respected. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not so sure which one it was. No, but uh, I tried to steer well clear, and they left me well alone, which I was really pleased with. To be fair. <laughs> oh, that's that's not. Oh, come on, that you could have got your um, other question. And this is another question. I'm like from Lewis Wakefield. Was there any, um, did you see any yourself or any player like pre game rituals that um, you did? Well, superstitions? Yeah. Did you do anything? Uh, there's lots of people have their own superstitions, but I think you, you're kind of in your own little bubble before the game. And I had loads of superstitions. I had to do, try and do the same things. This, it sounds kind of mad. Superstitions are absolutely crazy because you do the same thing every week, even if you get beat. And yeah. you still do the same thing next week. So, in the end, if you look at them logistically, they, it, it's madness what you do. But I had the same routine regarding lucky pants and getting <laughs> chains in the same same time, same place, making sure the routine's the same sock first and the shin pads. And even my warm up was the same. I didn't like was to it? the ball. Yeah, even in the warm up, we do our normal warm up, and they're not set like warm ups are nowadays, where you have a fitness coach guy. You used to go out there and do what you want to do yourself. And I, I don't know for what reason that I didn't want to touch the ball before the warm-up. I wanted to wait until the game started until I touched the ball. So I try and avoid the ball at all costs in the yeah. warm-up, which nowadays is just absolute mental. <laughs> um, other thing, like I said, like, um, this question, I think everyone knows what you do. Um, you, you're, you're the manager at Baseford United. Um, what, what, when, you've, when the first time 
you wanted to be a manager? Like, who told you to be a manager? Like, for any to be like a any football manager like that? Well, nobody did, man. I, I fell into this by complete accident. Did you? Uh, I yeah, I stopped playing at thirty six. I finished my career at Ilkeston Town when I was yeah. thirty six. Yeah, had this persistent back injury and thought, right, it's the right time to stop because. I couldn't get through a season without getting injured at some point. So I stopped. Uh, I had six months off uh, doing absolutely nothing. Uh, okay. I went on holiday at Christmas, went on holiday at New Year, played a lot of golf. Uh, everyone and just loved the break. And after, everyone loved, everyone after six the months, man, I was bored shitless. What's your? I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know what to do. So at the time, my second son, Callum, who's now at Baseford, yeah. uh, was in Nottingham Forest Academy under 10s. And I went down to watch him and they were training on the Astro Turf at the Nigel Doherty as it is now and thought, surely I can give something back to football. Yeah. So I spoke to the coaches there. I said, how do I get involved in, in this? So I said, well, you have to go away and take coaching badges. I was the academy manager and the assistant manager. So then became assistant manager at Nuneaton Borough. Uh, then left Nuneaton Borough to go to Knox County. Yeah, well, it was just trying to uh, progress in my coaching career. So yeah. we went went from Ilkeston up to another league higher with Nuneaton. Uh, left Nuneaton to go, obviously, back to full-time coaching at Notts County. and was there for a couple of years. Ended up being caretaker manager twice in a season, which was a little bit strange. Uh, then came to Baseford two summers ago uh, and still waiting to finish the season due to this pandemic, which... Uh, which has put a kibosh on a lot of football, but we're nearly there. I know yeah. we'll be starting again next season. It was looking up for like that. I came to the, the, the baseball game when Forest under 21s came, and it was my first time they went. Um, so I saw the baseball stadium, and I thought, good, good team. I see some Callum's there, and I know a few other guys that um, who plays there as well. And it'd be nice, like I said, um, what, 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 can you tell everyone what, what league are baseball in? Yeah, we're in the Northern Premier League. So outside the full-time period, uh, pyramid of Football League, then there's the National League, then there's the National League South yeah. and North, which is the same equivalent of Step 2. We're Step 3 of non-league. So yeah. Tier 7 of the Football Pyramid. Uh, so our ambition is to get into the National League. Uh, we've got big plans for the stadium at Baseford United. Uh, and we just we just want to get back into play football again, Ben. Hopefully these restrictions which are lifted today will give us an opportunity to Hopefully. start training again. Start training again and then at some point we can have fans back in the ground for for everyone's benefit as well as the players and the coaching staff just for the fans, Ben, just to get in 100%. and get out and just see some football for the for the hope their own mental health as well. So we're very, very big on that that we just want things for everybody uh, to participate in. Okay. Um, over quick the question, like, who was the best player that you played against with? The best player I played against, uh, probably Eric Cantona. Eric Cantona, okay. Uh, yeah, I had everything. He was he was a big man. He was six foot two, he was strong, he was quick. But I've, I've said this before, that there's, there's like different kinds of people. Cantona was probably the best all-round player. Yeah. Uh, probably the best goal scorer, maybe Jürgen Klinsmann. Uh, okay. Very good player. Uh, but I, when I first started playing, I was playing against people like Niall Quinn and Mark Hughes. And they were... Yeah. Big people and big, big strong players. people. But there's, there's loads and loads of great strikers. Shearer was another one, a horrible so-and-so, Alan Shearer, but another great footballer. Uh, probably the best one I've played with, like I said before, is was Stan. Stan by a mile. 100%. Stan, Colley, Stan, Stan Collymore uh, was as, as good as England had in a striker uh, that didn't fulfil his potential and didn't get all the plaudits that he should have done. Uh, the year that he scored, well, the two seasons when he scored 50 goals for Forest. Uh, it was unbelievable. And he's, he's as close as to the original Ronaldo 9 that I've said before. He could have been anything. Uh, but it was unbelievable the time we spent with him. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll say there, like, he scored 11 goals. Um, I, I know you, this is a long time ago. Like, I, remember, I, I don't know if you remember the, the, you remember the goal he scored against uh, Sheffield United at Bramall Lane? Yeah, from the edge of the box. Yeah, yeah you scored long shots. Do, do, come on. That's, that's the, I think there's a goal against Sheffield United and there's other ones. Um, Sunderland at home Sunderland at home bangers Sunderland at home where it, where it hits the crossbar and bounces down and goes back in. yeah they're, they're the ones that I remember most yeah uh, mainly because I think the Sunderland game we won normally people when I score normally we've, we've lost normally yeah so there was a goal against Derby at the baseball ground yeah that's goal's Shilton, that's, that was which, was another, which was another hero uh, yeah. we lost that 
Munich, people talk about. We lost that. We lost so that. <laughs> people always talk about people always talk about goals where I've lost in games. So to score a goal and win, scored against Portsmouth away in the promotion year from about a yard out, which was a horrible, but we won that one as well. So I remember those more. Uh, this is it's just a strange quote. This is from James from London. And as a centre back, let's say it was you, Colin Cooper, and when you're playing against good strikers, what, what like did you have one of days like I had, you've done a great job on a def, on a striker. Like, was there any strikers that you did? Oh, I've gone, I've gone home. I've done a fantastic job on that defense striker. Was there any striker you did that against? Well, probably the, the, the probably the hardest game and the, the game that I remember that we did a proper job was uh, Manchester United away when we beat them two one. Two one. Um, yeah, yeah, we beat them in, when we finished third in the Premier League that year. That was probably the most complete. I know we can see the goal right near the end, but that was probably our most complete game as a back four. To play against that team, which was full of superstars. Uh, and like I say, again, Nottingham Forest going to Old Trafford. I don't think they've been beaten at home for something like two years. Uh, and we go there and we, we turn them over on their own patch. It was brilliant. So that's probably where I thought that was a good day for us. What was your best, what's your best memory at the City Ground? Best memory at the City Ground? Ooh. Beating Manchester United 4 0 at home, scored in that as well. There what you year, go. What, what year was that? Uh, oh, wow, that would have been. I'm, 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 I'm 36. Like I'm 36. And, I, and I, I, I just kept looking back. Where's, where, like, I, seen, I, seen, I saw the early goals, but I think even. Yeah, that early. was early. We, uh, I think we were 4 0 up at half time, Ben, to be fair. Was you? I was well, well, yeah, Webby was, at, Webby was at United then. Yeah. Uh, and Jim Layton was in goal. And I say, I think we went 4 0 up at half time and won 4 0. So that was a really good evening. Uh, but yeah, it was like an evening, or I think it was an evening game, to be fair, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, another question, and like I said, that, that, the, I think it was a 97, 98 season, like he played with players like Des Little, Colin Cooper, Stuart Pearce, and even Olive Hilda. And like, I was there, I, I remember that season so good. And what, what was it like being in with, with that, that back line? Uh, yeah, it was really good. Like I say, Des was a brilliant signing when we took him from Swansea. Not many people knew a lot about Des. Yeah. Uh, I played with Colin in under 21s with England. Uh, obviously, got to know Colin even more when he moved down to Nottingham and our family spent a lot of time together. And obviously, playing with Stuart in the first place. And then Tank arrives, uh, two completely different characters. Mm. Uh, then we have obviously played with Norm behind us, who's a fantastic servant for Forest and a great goalkeeper. I still speak yeah. to Norm. Yeah, regularly. Uh, then Best came in. Uh, so we had some good players, uh, some internationals. We had some really, really experienced players around, and it was a really good time to be in that group. Yeah. Okay. Um, last but not, not least, uh, Chats. Um, what was your like? Who's your best? I'm, I'm going to ask you. Like, I know you might mention Brian Clough as, as your best manager, but what, what top three managers that you play? Not just Forest, like any other club, like you played with. Well, obviously, one goes without saying. Uh, you know, he says himself, he, he wouldn't say he's the best manager in the world, but he's in the top one. Top one, uh, yeah. Yeah, Brian Clough, obviously, won. Uh, I really enjoyed working under all the managers. Like, Frank was fantastic. Frank uh, was. When Frank came in, like I said before, he had a, he had a lot to deal with. Uh, and he got Forrest back on the map again. I uh, really enjoyed being with Dave Bassett twice. Like I say, at Forrest, we got promotion twice. One with Frank, one with Dave Bassett, and then went to Barnes and he helped me a lot. Uh, so probably they're the best three at Forest because they're the only ones that I really had any joy with, to be to be fair. Mm. Uh, I've worked with other managers as well, which obviously aren't as high profile or I'd been in the in his in better team, shall we say. So probably those three. Uh, it'll go in the Clough one, Clark two, Bassett three. Okay. Um, and let's have so much questions like regarding the forest season. Like it's been you um, was the last person to get forest promoted. Um, it's been twenty three years now, and everyone talks about um, forest have had so much managers in the past, blah blah blah. But what's your opinion uh, on? Do you think Hooten's the man to, to get forest up? Uh, I think he needs some time, Ben. Uh, but we've said that on numerous occasions with other yeah, managers. So many times. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's an environment which is very, very unforgiving. Uh, he stabled the ship, Chris, when he came in, uh, bought some good players. But again, you still have that uh, Achilles heel of not scoring enough goals in games. Uh, I think they've scored twice, 
maybe in three or four games only this season, which isn't enough for a team to get themselves away from where they are at the minute. Yeah. They seem to be consistent at the back. I know Joe's been a bit of a miss in the last few games. I know Joe really well. Mm. Uh, but they just need some consistency, Ben. They need a little bit of time and people just... It's a really easy thing to say. People need to just relax a little bit mm. and let people do the work and see where we're at the end of the season. Let's consolidate uh, and let's try and plan for next season. And, you know, is it realistic to try and get in the playoffs this season? Probably not. Mm -mm. Even if you had a fantastic run. Uh, but you've gone from playoff contenders to missing out for the last kick of the game last season to yeah. struggling at the bottom of the league at parts this season. So... It's unforgiving, the championship. It's a crazy, crazy league with some really big teams and even the teams down the bottom can beat the teams around the top. So I just think a little bit of a understanding of the situation of the club itself and let somebody do the work and see where we can get to the, in a medium term, shall we say. Whether it gets that joy, I don't know. Mm. Um, last but not least, uh, and a question. This is from Mark from America. Um, he's one of your idols as well. Um would you like in the future, like so you are based for manager, we'd love to be like any part of Forest, like manager, assistant manager, coach, come back to Forest? Well, I was, I was there. I was there for, like I said, I was there for about seven years and left yeah. in 2013 because I didn't see a pathway for me to get around the senior group, which is in the end, when you start your coaching career is what you want to be around the senior group. Yeah. Listen, I, I've set myself a plan here. I'm really enjoying my time here at uh, Baseford United. And we've got something to try and see out here. Listen, you've got Matt Thornhill. You. You. Matt, you got Matt Thornhill. We got Matt Thornhill with us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Matt is playing the, obviously in the first team. Uh, Matt's our captain and just signed a new deal with us. So we look forward to working with Matt again. Mm. But no, I've got a job to do here, Ben. And if people want to put you on some kind of uh, pathway to where they want me to be, that's for them to say. It's not for me. I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing, and I really enjoy what I do here. And I said, I love. Like I said. Uh, you're back to training again and hopefully um, I, I'm t like I said I enjoyed it when I went from Forest and 21 once came to visit Baseford and I'd love to um, come to visit you visit Baseford as well that'd be, that'd be loved to, I'd love to do that yeah listen come on down come on down whenever you want to listen get in, get in contact bring your camera down <laughs> do some interviews with the boys I'm sure Reedy will be very accommodating as well with his group as well so still speak to Reedy very regularly uh, I, see, I, see, I saw Reedy the other day I think he was um, he was jogging I was taking my daughter to school and I saw him jogging. I uh, would probably probably run into the uh, to Greg's. <laughs> oh, don't hear that. Uh, but, <laughs> but Steve, it's been a, oh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, like I said, it's been one of my one of my idols, Steve. Um, Five hundred and twenty three games, um, and it's been a it's been a pleasure, Steve, for coming on my channel. Take your time as well in your busy period as well with base radar. But Steve, it's been a pleasure, and um, you got anything to say to Forest fans? Uh, enjoy the ride it's always, it's always been a bumpy ride shall we say uh, there's always ups there's always downs uh, but like I say we have to try and keep uh, a lid on some things uh, just stick with them stick with the group stick with the team uh, and see where they get to but thanks Ben I really enjoyed it thanks for your time yeah well back to people if you enjoyed this, this uh, make sure you do hit the like subscribe button but like I said Steve Chettle thank you very much for coming on and hopefully I'll see you soon cheers buddy cheers dude